Good morning everybody, Bo Yoder here. Uh, I was intending to make you a video uh, live trading the MES. I've gone through my paper trading, I've gone through my testing historical phase, and um, so now it's time to start forward testing. Uh, and of course the very first test ended up with, uh, a, um, I got one flip off and then I had a data issue, uh, and then the video didn't work, so pretty classical Murphy's Law. So I'm up, I think, uh, two points on the day so far. But uh, you can see here, I should have been, I should have done a lot better. I had one flip there that sh that uh, I think I got. Uh, this one I scratched because it was screwed up. I didn't have data. Didn't want to uh, be a participant. And it looks like I might have even gotten one last flip. So I missed about two there. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and delete my area of operations. That trade is done. And we can look and see what's happening next. So right now, we're in kind of a double top scenario. If we look at the five minute, you can see that um, we're in an uptrend, we're pretty extended. We've had one, two, this may be three pushes to a top. Um, we'll see. I'm not quite ready to commit to the short side and certainly there's nothing in the long side right now because we're in a directional move. Uh, if we look at the 15 minute, we can see that again, we're kind of extended. So we're probably more likely in a topping scenario than uh, anything else. So the short side may be where the next flurry is um, coming from. However, let's go ahead and watch the microstructure. So we're getting the breakout above the highs, getting some good extension here. So if this thing doesn't really confirm a top uh, or some major resistance here, then I would be interested in the next pullback. So let's see, if this thing pulls back, there's some support up in here, but I don't really want to start buying at the very, very top of a giant extended move like that because those moves can um, retrace 100%, which would be catastrophic for a market making process, right? We want chop and sideways action, not straight up, straight down type movement. And this straight up movement may also be an exhaustive um, element. So, again, this video, I don't have any kind of a, um, a good example to show you. This is real time, so it could be a little boring. And uh, that's the nature of the beast. So, had the easy money there. Technical uh, uh, issues uh, robbed me of uh, at least a couple of those trades. Okay, now we're seeing some resistance. That's not an awe inspiring breakout. So then the question is, okay, if this is a pullback, what do I think is likely to happen? Well, after that anemic breakout, we're more likely to come back down, bounce back up to a double top or a lower high than anything else. So I don't want to be very aggressive up here near the highs. We may not see that kind of a retracement. To me, it seems like the most uh, prudent way to look at this would be maybe uh, starting an area of operations about halfway down. And let's go ahead and just kind of see what the price action looks like. If we get a straight up, straight down move, one of these 100% retracements with no wiggles, then I'm certainly not going to be catching that falling knife because that could mean that this is a false breakout and we're about to get body slammed uh, below these lows, in which case I would want to be short. Um, but I'm not interested in directional markets with a market making style because the whole point is to harvest uh, the, the volatility, harvest the chaos. No chaos, no edge. So this would be more of a day trading short, a peak double top, a, a false breakout kind of a trade, which would be a uh, an LPT ping pong, classic LPT ping pong to come back to these lows. Okay, so I've got some evidence against me that trading to the long side may be higher risk. And again, just for reference, let's go to the five minute. And you can see that, that um, big momentum push up and then a medium momentum push up and then now a uh, low momentum push up with, with a false breakout at this point. So it looks like the argument might be changing. And there's really no incentive for me to go super aggressive and be short right now, because if I make an area of operations, uh, that's such a small little amount that the chances of me taking a blowout are really high on a retest. And also, if I go short right now with one ladder level, and this is a momentum market uh, after a false breakout, I'm gonna get one flip and it's just gonna crank lower. So there's not a real lot of uh, benefit for me there. I want to see that chaos. I want to see a retest, kind of like we had here. We had a big directional move, then a push down, then we had some chaos and chop, and I started getting involved uh, about halfway back down into the pullback. 
So in any uptrend, you've always got the uh, woefully optimistic, the fools who think that every pullback is viable forever. And so, uh, again, with a merchant mentality, are they all buying back up here? Maybe, but more likely there's a lot of people buying back down in here. So if I really want to serve the biggest marketplace and have the highest probability for success, I want to let this, um, let this process a little bit more. Now, if this goes back up and confirms the uh, LPT ping pong with a uh, with a double top or another false breakout or another uh, resist development, maybe a lower high, then I have a high probability I'm going to come back down to these lows, and I might go ahead and start uh, taking action. But right now, we're not really seeing much. We're starting finally to chop a little bit. But again, I think this market is very vulnerable to just a straight line move. It is a classic uh, LPT ping pong. So maximum uncertainty at the moment. We've got the bulls uh, promoting a breakout. We've got the, uh, the worried traders probably taking profits or exiting uh, previous longs uh, due to the false breakout. They may uh, end up having to re-enter with FOMO uh, if this breaks out to the upside. So. Uh, Uncertainty is not your friend. Chaos and uh, argumentation within a zone is your friend. Uh, use, utilizing this style, this market making style. All right, still inconsequential sideways flop. Let's see if we can get one more big bullish push to the upside and a failure. That would get me involved on the short side. Now, if, if this thing goes up and double tops and I want to get short, I really don't have a solid area of operations. So essentially, if I'm doing this in my mind's eye, I would assume that the area of operations is something like this. And that rather than catching the knife as it goes up into that level, I'll just take it, you know, flip it, and then try to, try to uh, you know, enjoy any wiggles that occur on the opposite direction. But that's very speculative. It hasn't happened yet. So I'm just pre-thinking almost just scrimmaging in my mind's eye what I want to do. And why is this letting me delete that box? There we go. All right, so here's a bullish push. Let's see what happens there. All right, coming up. Can't even test the highs yet. Let's see if they put in another false breakout. That would actually be an LPT within an LPT. I'm tempted just to take the LPT trade and uh, and forget market making on that. Well, let's see. Price will tell us what to do. Okay, there's our breakout. Now, is this going to get body slammed? So far, the answer is yes. Let's go ahead and see if we can let that bar close. thinking about it yeah that looks pretty pretty negative to me all right well for fun let's take this as an LPT ping pong then not as a market making opportunity so I go ahead and just make sure that that um, that big tail bar wasn't a fakie getting another test of that liquidity pool there at the highs at uh, 5325. Another rejection. Perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take that as an LPT ping pong. So I'm going to go to uh, 3550. I'm going to put my t uh, stop two ticks above the high. And actually, I want that one more tick up. There we go. All right, so now I got an LPT ping pong trade. First uh, test needs to take out this low because there's a little intermediate low. If it doinks and breaks out, I'll get stopped out. But really, the target's down here. And I have a trade within a trade, which sweetens it to a level where I'm 
I'm, you know, willing to take it, even though I was hoping to make this into a market making, um, a market making uh, video. So getting a little red bar. Let's see if we can release here. Again, this liquidity pool is the highest probability. Waiting for the other shooter drop. Now, if I was trading size, I would probably, because uh, you can kind of see geometrically this level and this level, there's a little more um, than one-to-one -one back to these lows. So I would take half off if I had a big position size, but I'm just flipping onesies here, getting a sense for things. And uh, this seems like a good teachable moment. And I may stop out, let's see. I haven't had an, uh, an LPT ping pong that I was able to show live um, intraday certainly had some entries in the deeper time frames for some swings and things that you've seen but here's another uh, push up that got rejected that should give us release and if it keeps fighting here then that will cement my um, opinion that uh, I should take profits down here rather than expecting a full 100% retracement. You can see it's definitely it's definitely in an area of uncertainty. It's just trying to make a decision here. Lots and lots of selling, but no real release yet. There's still that, that um, fight between the bulls and the bears. Now, LPT ping pongs are very quick and violent moves. So I've been in this thing now, one, two, three, three bars. Yes, the stop's very close, but if this thing chops uh, sideways again, it's probably going to stop out, and I would go ahead and take the scratch. Usually these are very quick rejections with good follow-through. If this keeps fighting, then um, my odds are, are dropping dramatically every bar that occurs that doesn't um, snap in the opposite direction. All right, there's a little bit of a push. All right, I really want to see this thing move, or I will uh, consider it a scratch. Or it'll stop out. Next bar will pretty much tell the tale. Again, the LPT ping pong usually runs around a 60% win rate, which emotionally feels like 50-50. That's one of its... Oh, and it got stopped out. That's one of its benefits, actually, because it forces you to... Um, uh, to, to uh, live in the land of uncertainty, following a plan, not freaking out, not second guessing, but just following through. Uh, I always joke it's like a uh, it's like a gym for your trading mind. So if you can trade LPT ping pongs consistently and uh, without uh, inducing human error, then you've built a skill set for trading, execution, and management that will serve you no matter what you like to trade. All right, so the uh, the multiple topping actions have now been have now failed. We have a real breakout, and the market's trending. So now I'm much um, less worried about a 100% retracement, and it seems that the that market has picked its direction. It's definitely time to be interested in market making uh, to the long side. So where's my area of operations? Well, we'll probably come back to break uh, retest the breakout. Um, I would expect that we would come down and maybe interface into this whole mess of support here. So that's a pretty good level. So I would say I want to start my area of operations right around here. Putting it below this low is way too aggressive. So I think it needs to be back down here. And so if that's the case, then our horizontal lines would be something along. I definitely want to be into this support level. So probably right there, one right there, one right there. And one right there. So let's see what happens. If this thing continues to moon launch, then I would need to uh, adjust that for sure. All right, continuing to go higher. 
If this goes substantially higher, then I'd be able to restrict my area of operations back to these lows. But I would really want to see some uh, aggressive momentum if that is going to be the case. All right, a little bit of resistance coming in. Market digesting, taking some gains. The more process the top has, kind of like this had a lot of cho choppy sideways action before it began to go down, back down into correction, the better. What you really want to avoid is the fear of missing out pressure that um, uh, I missed a few trades down here because of technical stuff. I just got stopped out on LPT ping pong. You know, so you're trying to get your money back. You're trying to take revenge on the market. That's the worst possible mentality you can have. Instead, you got to maintain that that detachment, that calm. So if this thing doinked up and it doinks back down, well, that's probably not going to be a, uh, a messy sideways uh, type pullback, which is exactly what you want as a market maker. So uh, keep powder dry. But it looks like it's shaping up, starting to chop sideways a little bit. Give it a couple more bars. Again, this is a one minute chart, so the bars cycle pretty quickly. And I'm just going to let this run. I made the chart a little smaller, so it'll be easier to uh, render and upload. And you can always watch this on uh, 2x speed if you're interested, or fast forward through the boring parts. But one of the, my main goals with everything I do is to model reality. And there's so many people out there sort of fraudulently promoting how quick and easy everything is, and that's not the case. Trading is mostly pretty boring. You're mostly just waiting for someone else to make a mistake so that uh, they give you a, a, an in, inappropriately high odds scenario. Okay, so the top's just sort of chugging there. Probably get one more push to the upside uh, into exhaustion before we get any meaningful correction. If that is the next moon launch, then that will be the next moon launch. We'll see that. little test attempt now. Not all that awe inspiring. Remember our deeper time frame posture if we look at the 15 minute. And we squish down here. We've come out of a, 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 a oversold scenario. We're bouncing back up. We've got a pretty significant high back up here at 51. That's probably going to be a an attraction uh, for a test intraday. We've broken this level. Um, if we look at the bars themselves, we can see that we're pretty darn extended, uh, which which often implies two things. One, that we're going to get one final pullback and a, a decent chance to market making the pullback uh, with uh, a retest or a lower high coming. Or we're in a crazy uh, momentum move that's going to just take us up, up, up. Five minute see the granularity again we've, we've got decent breakout but nothing great decent breakout but nothing great lots of resistance showing all right let's go back and check at the one minute okay so that right there so we chewed through we got a, a little bit of a scared selling move now it's starting to fight this is looking perfect well it's getting some overlap getting some disconnection let me go ahead and put my order in i'm ready to co commit to my ladder And if this thing pulls a 100%, I'll take the blowout with a smile on my face. The odds of that, I think, are very, very low. We've got momentum to the upside. Uh, and in fact, the biggest risk is that it just chops sideways here above my... Uh, I've been too conservative, and it's going to chop up here above my fills, and I don't get filled. So, feeling pretty good about it right now. And let's see how this unfolds. Market definitely catching a bid here. And here's the next wave of selling. Let's see if it can get down to fill me. Well, I want to 
want that nice expansive push down into my fill level so I have an easy um, easy bounce back to sell into. Oh, missed me for now. All right, here we go. A couple of ticks more. One tick, missed me by a tick, missed me by a tick. Oh, don't do that to me. Again, directional momentum markets aren't good for market making. So if it literally misses me by a tick and goes flying back to the highs, I'll probably um, end this session and uh, go do some other things. Because if the market's going to be very, very directional, then it's not going to be good for this style. Dancing with me. Come on down and get me. I'm right at 34.75. Nope, looking like support's holding. Looks like this will be a miss. The trigger for me to cancel and walk would be a rally back up towards 38 or 39. Because that shows that we're in a momentum mode. I'd um, probably give it uh, at least half hour, an hour, and come back and look at it later in the, after, uh, in, the uh, in the morning. No economic numbers at 10.30, so you don't have to worry about uh, volatility. That's another thing to be very careful of. You don't want to get run over by a, the steamroller of uh, exogenous movement from some kind of a news announcement, uh, Fed announcement, you know, anything like that that's economically powerful. You want to steer clear. That's not a market-making environment. But after the numbers come out and the, um, the momentum, you know, and the whipsaw moves are done, things calm down 15, 20, 30 minutes later, that can be a great market for uh, market-making. Again, we want listless, confused, overlapping action. Smooth trends, and you don't get very many flips. All right, come on, guy. Hit me. Boom. Done. Awesome. All right, I'm going to throw that at, it at 37. At least I'll get one off here. Starting to hit that first level of uh, chart support. Best case scenario for me now would be that this rallies up to a lower high at, say, 38 or 39 and comes back down for a complex correction, a so-called ABC correction. That would be great. All right, solid tail, bit of a hammer candlestick. Let's see if we can get that buy impulse back up, flip out at 37, bid back around 35. Still fighting with support. So the traditional pullback buyers are waiting for their uh, candlestick buy pattern at this point on a breakout retest. So there's a, um, a strong technical constituency I'm serving here by buying support when it was uncertain whether or not it would uh, hold. If I get some candlestick confirmations here, then the certainty level rises and people are willing to pay me a premium uh, to get into this pullback trade. You know, and God bless them. If it goes to 54 or 52.40 or higher, that's great. They've paid me a premium for their uh, confidence and certainty. And I'm basically arbitraging their lack of confidence and their uncertainty with the market making style by being willing to, to step up and, and buy these levels. Support still manifesting. Again, worst case scenario for me is that this is it, and it just flies back up to the highs, in which case I uh, you know, would cancel my area of operations and probably call this video. I don't want these videos to be super long. 15 to 30 minutes is kind of a sweet spot for people to um, pay attention and, and get some uh, uh, teachable moments, some, some actual learning, some sense for the rhythm of the thing. It's almost like being a musician. The market has a very distinct rhythm and pattern to it. You can really see that as you watch the tape here in these smaller time frames. Support is manifesting itself very visually. Right, we had that big spike down into support, then it went sideways, and it was 
a little bit of a lower momentum spike down into support. Um, actually, if we go to the 10 second chart, we can see that microstructure even more clearly, right? So there's our push down, it comes back up, comes to a higher low. Uh, it's trying to make a higher high, which would be uh, above 36. If that's the case, you know, the next liquidity uh, pool in the microstructure is 75.37. Um, All good stuff. The longer it sits here at support without bouncing, the more likely it is to go lower and give me my next fill. So actually, let's just stay on the 10 second chart a little bit. We can see that microstructure. We can see that argument between the bulls and the bears right now. Okay, there's our release. So we've broken this, this little uh, mini micro swing high, moving back up to this micro swing high. 37 is my number. I'm two ticks away. One tick away, and what do we got? Anything, anything? Come on, guys. One tick, one tick. Fill me, and I'll get reflipped. Bueno. All right, money in the bank. What do I do? Rebid. Okay, so now, again, always sort of pre-thinking. What's best case? What's worst case scenario? Best case scenario is this is a pathetic lower high. If it, you know, like it is now, I get filled back here. I get filled. I get filled at the next level on the complex correction. Worst case scenario is that it catches uh, its second wind here and goes flying up to the highs. At which point, this whole um, bid ladder is irrelevant. I need to, uh, you know, re reconvene and and um, reanalyze. And in that case, it'll just be a, a one flip. Uh, ladder and that's fine we haven't gone deep into the math and the economics of this I'm kind of saving that for the uh, the formalized training but uh, I think I got two points out of that bought it at five sold it at seven so that's a uh, hundred dollars per um, per contract on the full ES I'm trading the MES since I don't want anyone to learn a new style with you know with a big size but um, here this is one tenth so two dollars would be ten bucks, right? You can open up a thousand dollar account, get all of the real time um, execution skills and all of the emotional stuff taken care of with a very small amount of money at risk. MES is a wonderful learning tool if you're interested in futures, and it doesn't um, it doesn't have the pattern day trading rule issues, so day trading is fine. Trade as much as you like. All right, market definitely being resisted. It's not really in an area of strong resistance um, in a traditional way. So this is just sort of a uh, an interesting little muddle in the middle of nowhere. That would imply that all the people who uh, traded this long uh, section or are uncomfortable by that pullback for some reason and are, are just selling the uh, the upticks. That implies more weakness. That implies we're going to be moving lower, hopefully to get the next um, next level. So if this thing whooshes lower and I get the fives and the thirty two fifties, no problem. Again, I'm not I'm not going to uh, lose unless it takes out this low. If it takes out this low, my whole premise is wrong, at which point I deserve to lose anyway. So if this is the top for the morning, uh, then so be it. Right now we're doing okay. It's just a little bit of a complex correction. It's just kind of working itself out. If it comes back down and I get uh, filled at 5, and then it, again it... it um, double bottoms there, and that's the end of this correction. And we fly back up to the highs, cancel area of operations with two flips, move on. It's been such a long time since I did this on a, a consistent basis daily that um, I don't really have you know good numbers for that. But my memory is that you know one to three flips was at least probably fifty percent of all your campaigns. And then you'd sometimes get into these just, you know, massive money days where the market's just dying listless sideways and you're just flipping and flipping and flipping, you know, you get 50, 60, 70. Uh, I've had days with over 100 trades and, um, you know, those are the best 
payout environments for this style. If it's if the market's in a momentum move, usually you can get one or two flips, but rarely more than that out of a particular campaign. You know, but still, if you think about it in terms of the ES, you know, if it's a two-point ladder, if you get one or two flips, yeah, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks per contract. Definitely worth showing up for. If you trade tens, then every flip's a thousand dollars, twenty-two thousand dollars, etc. One thing I want to remain consistent on is, is talking about points captured uh, and percentages because I want all of these concepts to be universal. It's very easy uh, for me to come in and you know waggle money around and trade 25, 50, 100 contracts. Um, that creates a buzz, it creates some pressure, but I think it's, it's a lie. I think it's a, a form of emotional fraud because most of the people watching don't have that level of, of cash. So I'd much rather work at a level that's um, uh, a baseline and then is infinitely scalable. So if you've got the wherewithal and the skill and the mental ability to trade uh, 100 contracts, great. Take whatever you see here and multiply by 100. If you like to trade fives, multiply by five. If you've got a small account or if you're still learning and you want to make your mistakes uh, without a whole lot of money on the line, then divide it by 10 and trade the, trade the micros. It just lets everything be scalable. Because like the market, uh, profitability is fractal. It takes the same amount of energy, the same amount of uh, analysis, the same amount of management skill and, and, uh, and time to manage uh, a 100 contract position as it does a onesie. All right, so this is starting to look like we've got some momentum building. This thing may launch to the upside. If it doesn't, it's definitely going to come back and fill my 35s. But if it launches without me, we're about 32 minutes into this, uh, this session. I think I'll probably lock it there and um, go on about my day. And the kids are at school. Um, my little three-month-old is sitting here. He just woke up too, so my uh, ability to sit down and just trade from 9.30 to 4 is is no longer um, no longer my standard for a while now. So it's also a good little bit of uh, additional pressure because most other people don't have the ability to just trade full time anyway. They're trading around a work schedule. They're trading on their lunch break, and um, so I think modeling those sort of ad hoc uh, market experiences is uh, is valuable. All right, coming down and filled my fives, throwing it back out at seven. Rinse and repeat. So now if we get a complex correction, there's a pretty good shot at getting uh, my 3250s filled. If the support level that held in the past holds, I should get my 37s easy. And if it if it holds here, I would expect that it's probably gonna break out above this high and, and, and start rocketing again. All right, so there's some selling. Probably take out those lows. Liquidity pool theory. Always seeking the liquidity. That actually works for me because I want to get filled at this next level. Notice how there isn't um, as much emotional or the opportunity for emotional engagement with this style. Uh, imagine if you were a pullback trader, right? And you bought your pullback and you got a nice uh, bit of a reinforcement that was going up. You're expecting it to touch the highs and break out. And now it's coming back down again. Maybe you have your stop under here, so you're not really worried about the stop getting hit. Uh, but, you know, but maybe it will, right? There's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of wig yourself out. That default mode network kicks in. You start second guessing. Here, you're really just focused on, okay, I got the flip. Now I'm over here, and I'm over here, and I'm up here. Uh, it, it keeps you in task positive network dominated mode, which reduces the amount of fussing that your mind can do. So big solid up thrust there. That looked really good. Um, what was the uptick on that? Ah, oh, it missed me by a tick. That's too bad. That would have been a sweet fill because I probably would get another one here. 
The fact that that got rejected means we're going lower. So that was a miss. Too bad. That would have been a sweetheart. I would have gotten filled again at 35 already. Love those. Sometimes that'll happen. You you barely get your your uh, your fill and you're putting your order out. Boom, you get your, your up thrust and you're selling into that. And then it zips back down. You get filled again on the bid. You're barely keeping up. That's when it really gets fun and exciting. This is a pretty stable, uh, pretty nice uh, um, morning so far. Not a lot of frantic action, but pretty solid. You can actually kind of just see the market structure. We had a push up, we pushed down. That's kind of technically a down wiggle. Another push up, LPT ping pong. Uh, f a failure to break substantially, retests uh, down in the other direction. That's what we're getting. So if this liquidity pool under the lows is, uh, is violated, we'll probably come back down to test these liquidity pools uh, down under these lows. And I'll get another fill. We'll see. All right, breakdown. Is that a false breakdown? In which case, we'll probably release to the upside. If it's not, then uh, definitely my 3250s are in play. All right, not a ton of breakdown energy. Oh, here we go. Come on down. Come and get me. A couple more ticks. I'm right at 32.50. Nope, support coming in again. Missed it. That would actually be an LPT ping pong to the long side right now. See that low? Not right there. Let's see where we go. Okay, coming back down. Still missed me by a tick. Come on, guys. One more little wiggle is all it's going to take. It's fishing for a bottom here. Let's see if we can get a reversal candlestick. I'll put on another contract just for the LPT for fun. All right, can we get a bullish engulfing bar? Yes. And let's see if we can close that bar. Yeah, I'll take that trade. Okay, so now I have an LPT uh, ping pong. I'm going to cancel this and basically trade in parallel. And I will put my sell stop market down there. And I'll just simply make this uh, a two contract exit. So that's interesting. We've got the LPT ping pong trade valid to the long side. We've got the market making move valid to the long side. Odds are very good on this. So I have two um, concentric trades, right? I've got an active market making uh, trade and I also have a, um, I actually also have an LPT ping pong. And come to think of it, I just made a math error, didn't I? If I sell stop here, it's going to take me back to one contract right at the place I wanted to add a contract. So I'm just going to cancel that because if I was willing to take um, a fill down here anyway, the fact that I got filled up here, um, I'll just play it as if that's the ladder. But I don't think it's going to be, I think that's irrelevant. I'm going to get filled here in just a second. Let's see if I can get it. I'm on the offer, got, and I'm out. Awesome. Okay, so about 38 minutes. That's about as long as I want to go. I don't want to um, get too tedious. As they say, the uh, mind can only absorb what the butt can endure. So I feel like that's a good place to stop. We've had a good example. I'm going to click the close box, cancel all my open orders, and then uh, let's go over here and figure out what the day was. Again, I'm just thinking around with a little account and doing some testing. So um, about 26 bucks after uh, commissions. Commissions are about the same uh, with the biggie as the MES. Uh, if you get uh, one tick, you, you know, you've made a profit, you've paid the broker and you made a profit. So, you know, two point ladder, you, you do well. Uh, so let's see, so 26, 43 divided by five bucks a point. I made 5.28 points because uh, I was trading one contract. And if, uh, if I'm doing a thousand dollar account, 26 bucks divided by a thousand is a 2.6 gain. So, you know, two, three, four, five, ten percent on good days. That's pretty, pretty reasonable. And, um, uh, there's no reason why I can't come back a little bit later and uh, reposition, get a different area of operations, and go back to work. Okay, so there we go. I um, hope you got some good value uh, and some aha moments out of that. Um, 
nothing else I really think I can add. I'm going to go take care of this little guy and uh, go about my morning. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening.